Hey everybody, so welcome to my next episode. Welcome to my next episode. No, that's weird. Welcome to my new episode of your perfect resume for the BIM job. Okay, so this video is gonna be fast. I'm gonna be really quick about this, five minutes or less. Okay, I'm not gonna be long winded or anything because I wanna give you the details that you need, the information that will get you the job in BIM. All right, I'm gonna use my resume as a reference to this video. Of course, it's not perfect. My resume is not perfect, okay? There is no such thing as a perfect resume. I'm gonna tell you this right now, okay? Your resume may be important, but it is definitely not as important as your experience. And I know that this is common sense and you already know this, okay? But I have to point it out because a lot of you are thinking that if you have my resume, then you're most likely to get the job. But I can tell you this, every company is different. Every company is looking for different people. The company I was working for, Katera, Katera is a company that does design, engineering, and construction all in-house. So the reason it took me in was because I had experience in the field. So while I was going to school in Arizona State University, I was working for core construction as an assistant project manager intern. So I was out there in the field a lot. I was doing, we were doing a remodel for a high school project. And this remodel took about four to five months but I was there in the job site almost every single day. I mean, because if you want to do a BIM, you got to know like what goes behind the wall, what goes above the ceiling, and like how construction takes place in the field. Because, um, you know, people say that if you know BIM, then you can do construction. But actually, in the real world, it is the opposite. Okay, if you know construction, then when it comes to doing BIM, you can do it well. The reason I say that is because a lot of times, um, when it comes to shifting equipments in the 3D environment, people don't know if they should move like one feet or two feet, whether they should be like nine foot above the floor or like 12 foot above the floor. It really depends on like which living space that you're in, depending on the residential area too. But the thing is this, if you know all these regulations and building codes and, and how construction is done in the field, you would have a better picture of what it's like and it's, it's gonna help you visualize better. You know, the best way to learn BIM is to actually just practice. Uh, of course, like, it's such a simple answer, right? Yet, a lot of people, the reason why they don't score in the interview is because they flunk in their, in their knowledge of BIM. Like, when the interviewer asks you questions about Revit and Nevisworks, you have to be able to tell them the answers that they wanna hear. And in order to do that, you have to actually get some experience you know so if you are somebody who has no prior experience who has never worked in construction and you want to get into BIM here are some of my um, tips that you can take in order for you to get the foot to the door the first thing I would do if I were you is to take up some BIM courses online I know lynda.com is a good resource YouTube is a great way to get your feet wet okay so global e-learning and training solution Google that I believe they have, okay, so they have really good BIM courses and I actually got a few certificate from that website. It's very thorough and it takes about, I think you have to put in at least 200 hours to get one certificate in Revit, if I'm not wrong. Um, okay, yeah, one thing that's really important is community service. So I would put down, okay, so, sorry, I'm like all over the place right now. but. If you want to score well with your interviewer, put in the courses that you took in school that taught you how to use Revit, Nevisworks, or AutoCAD. Okay, these courses might relate to the interviewer because usually your interviewer is not just the HR person but also the BIM manager. Fill up your resume to make yourself look good. Okay, you want to sell yourself in the best way possible. And of course, you got to put in as much construction experience as possible. Put in your technical skills, like, like you're proficient in Microsoft, Microsoft Office, you're proficient in Autodesk softwares, you're proficient in, um, in English. Oh yeah, and one more thing. Make sure to put down any awards that you have, okay? If you have Dean's List, um, if you have earned yourself some scholarship, don't forget to put it down. Um, but that's not the most important. The most important is that you have Revit experience Navis works experience, AutoCAD, and that you have used Autodesk softwares before, 
you know how to navigate sheets and drawings in Bluebeam and you have graduated from you know architectural or engineering degree and you have a couple internships under your belt that should be good enough and yeah I think that's it I don't know what else to say this is my resume and you can download my resume from Dropbox it's there for you now I just want to say now before before I go before you go I just want to say good luck with your job search because I know that BIM is the future it definitely is and you can do a lot with BIM. BIM is definitely going to take over construction. If you have any questions, just feel free to reach out to me. I'll definitely try to help as much as possible, okay? So, thank you for watching. Peace out, man. See ya.